morning's uh, Bible, Bible lesson, we're, we're continuing on uh, learning to be better Bible students. Uh, that's what the class is about in this series, and the design is to, as we continue on through this class, that by the time it's over, that you are a better Bible student, you have more understanding of the Bible, and these things are helps to you as you have developed better habits of study and learning what God's Word is and its meaning for us and us, our ability to understand God's will. So if you would, would you pray with me and we'll get started. Heavenly Father, we're thankful for this time that we can come together, that we can study your Word. We're are so thankful for your word, the simplicity of it, and the evidences that are found in it that allows us to know that it is your word and that we can trust the things that are in it, and that we can learn your will and be able to serve you better and to get rid of sin that may be present in our lives but to work each day to be better and better, to be more like the example Christ set. Father, we're thankful for all that you've done, the, the work of the Holy Spirit to bring all this about. And we're thankful for, of course, for Christ's blood that was shed on the cross for our sins. It's in his name we pray. Amen. So we talked about uh, last Sunday introducing the class. We talked about the... Uh, the problem with the people around us living in the world and why they are in the condition they are in and that uh, what is the cause for their condition what did we say anybody they they read the bible but they're not reading it the same way as you are so what does God say the, the problem is? Lack of what? Knowledge. Hosea 4, 6. My people are destroyed for lack of knowledge. So that's what the problem is. And just because... Say that again, Roberta. Right. That's right. So we have, we have a command to study the Scriptures and 2 Timothy 2.15, and to know and understand. And we have to rightly divide them. We have to know how it's set up and, and in order to have the proper understanding. So when you don't know those things, you get steered astray uh, by things. So uh, we talked about uh, two terms, exegesis and eisegesis. Exegesis is... is a big word. It just means that you, when you're reading, you're taking what it means, and you're having that understanding from it. I said, Jesus is you're reading into it, and you're putting, you're adding your bias, your think so, your own ideas, the things you like, and you're putting that in with the reading. So when you come away, you come away with not the truth, but the truth that you want to believe, which is not God's truth. So we looked at that. Uh, <clears throat> um, then uh, we looked at uh, how uh, God reveals himself to man through nature, through uh, providence. Um, and providence is, is, we looked at Paul teaching in Athens. That's God's providence in getting the word out to the lost. So he was teaching those in Athens. And that is what our duty is, is to carry the word to the lost. So that's God's providence. He has given that work to us. Um, uh, we talked uh, a little, about, little bit about the human conscience. Uh, uh, God reveals himself through Christ Jesus and through the written word. We also looked at the uh, law of cause and effect. Every effect has to have an adequate cause. 
and the Bible is in effect, therefore there are causes in it that, that uh, have to explain this effect. And when we look at scriptures, we can see that. But, but man is faced with the dilemma when he knows, looks at the word of God, that it's either men created this or it is from God. Those are the things that, that, that men decide and look at and, and they're, you know, if they choose to ignore the Bible, you know, they're probably thinking, well, it's just from man. It's just another thing because man, you know, likes to, to, uh, to make up the, this idea that there's a God, uh, this creator when, you know, when, when we're taught that evolution is what, how everything got here and they just don't understand science. There are people that look at God's word and they don't, they don't look at it as if it's from God. They look at it as if it's from man. So um, there are evidences in it and, uh, that, are, that are clear. So uh, we looked at uh, if God is the, is the source of the Bible, we would expect it to tell us so. And it does. If God is the source of the Bible, uh, since he is perfect, you would expect that God's word is perfect. And uh, since God is holy, um, you would expect that this is something that's holy and uh, uh, has an exalted moral tone in it. So um, if God is the source of the Bible, we, wouldn't, ex we would, wouldn't expect that any group of men could put this together. And we talked a little bit about that, uh, that this is not something that man could produce, nor is it something that he would produce. There are things in it that the Bible demands of, of man that men typically would not want to do. The only reason he would want to do that is to submit to the will of God. Um, so... Um, we look at we look at human nature, and human nature, uh, God has created us, and He's created us with a nature. So we have this curiosity, uh, a need to know things, but we have also a need to know our origin. Where did we come from? Uh, so we look into God's Word for that. We look to God to explain. Why are we here? Why did he create us? Um, we also know that no human can live happily without purpose. So when, uh, when you, you hear that term, you know, people are lost, a lot of times because they don't have that purpose. And some people have a purpose, but it's misguided. Um, the... Uh, The uh, Bible is designed to inoculate us against sin. Um, so if our intention is to learn what God's will is, we recognize that there is a right, there is a wrong, and we have to learn what, what that is through God's word. But <clears throat> the... Um, Reading it, then we have the proper understanding of what sin is. If you do this, this is sin. If you don't do this, uh, things that you're supposed to do, that's sin. So you, you learn to recognize what sin is, and it, and it prepares you against it. Because Satan is working to get you to rebel against God. It doesn't matter if it's a little or a lot. He doesn't care just as long as you're joining him in that rebellion. So uh, <clears throat> the Bible uh, inoculates us from sin. The more knowledge we fill our minds with, the better we are inoculated. Uh, you know, through the COVID stuff, they're saying that you need to go get these, the, the, the shots so that 
so that you could be protected from this disease. There are other vaccinations. Uh, well, the Holy Scripture is the same thing. It inoculates you uh, against sin. And if you don't have that, then you can't protect yourself from sin. And it is easy to tell, um, you know, when somebody just has no clue. Uh, their, their behavior, it's like you're not reading God's Word. And I, I talk to people and they say, you know, they, they go to worship where they go and, and they study God's word and everything. Well, I know, I know what they're saying, but I also know they're not. They're not studying. They're not reading because their behavior says so. Uh, their, behavior, their behavior shows that they don't have any clue about right and wrong. Um, so um, another thing that... Uh, we have to do is recognize false doctrine. Uh, Matthew chapter 7.15, let's look over there. Matthew chapter 7, verse 15. It says, Beware of false prophets who come to you in sheep's clothing, but inwardly they are ravening wolves. So they are coming deceitfully. They are pretending to be something they're not. How on earth are you going to be able to recognize who they are without knowing God's word? You can't. You have to know God's word to be able to recognize when people are doing this. And, you know, and these people have different motives. Sometimes they're just misguided and they're just repeating the the errors that they've learned, and they think those things are right, and you need to be taught the same thing. Um, you know, sometimes it's because for their own glory, that kind of thing. Um, so, you know, they, there's different reasons for it, but either way, it's out there, and it always will be. So we have to be able to recognize it when it, when it comes in through the door. <clears throat> So um, let's look over at 2 Thessalonians chapter 2, verses 11 and 12. 2 Thessalonians chapter 2, verses 11 and 12. And for this reason, God will send them strong delusion that they should believe the lie that they all may be condemned who did not believe the truth, but had pleasure in unrighteousness. People who don't care to know the truth, they can be easily deceived. You can be easily deceived as well. When you really want to do something that God condemns, you're going to find a way... And you're going to look through the scriptures and you may find verses that you think support what, you're believe, what you believe. Uh, we see that in uh, divorce and remarriage. Um, uh, we see that. We see that in, in adultery. Uh, we see the different things that people can think and they want to believe certain things. They want to believe that, well, God wants us to be happy. And I could not live with this person, so we got a divorce. And, and so now I'm with the one that I was truly meant to be. God wants me to be happy, and this is right. And the Bible teaches us that. No, it doesn't. It does not teach that. Uh, it teaches against that. It teaches what, when a marriage can be uh, broken. And it's not to meant to be that way. But it teaches when it can be. God designed, you know, one man for one woman, and, and, and it is designed that way. But people can be mis misled by their own think so. And the problem with that is that you're not, you're, not, you're not really aware that you're actually doing that. 
you don't, you're not aware that you're wanting to, you're not paying attention that you want to believe a lie, so you're searching for a lie. In your mind, you're searching for the truth. But you're looking for that truth that matches what you want rather than, than what the Bible actually says and what God says. Uh, he wants want how he wants it to be. So um, the Bible also prepares us for uh, teaching others. So we can't teach if we don't know. That's a, that's that's a, the simplicity of it. Is you know you just can't teach. There's no way to teach what you don't know. Uh, so looking at Second uh, Timothy. Chapter 3, verses 16 and 17. 2 Timothy, chapter 3, verse 16 and 17. It says, all Scripture. What part of Scripture is left out? None. All of it. All of it is given by inspiration of God. That word, inspiration... There has the meaning uh, God breathed, and the Greek term is theophanoustos, which is the way I say it, but I think I'm pronouncing it wrong. But it's God breathed. That means God. it came directly from God. So all Scripture is given by inspiration of God and is profitable for doctrine, for reproof, for correction, for instruction in righteousness that the man may be complete, thoroughly equipped for every good work. So it is our responsibility to know Scripture in order to be complete, to, to get that reproof, that correction. I think this way, I run across these verses that, that challenge my thinking. I've got a choice. Do I stick with what I think? Or do I turn to God's word and look at it and go with it? So the honest and good uh, heart will turn to that, go to the scripture, get rid of his think so, and go with that. That's how we change day to day uh, as we live. We're, we're always working towards that. So in the, um, we live in a, in a world of woe. Um, our rebellion against God has brought bad things into this world. Uh, the, in the garden was a perfect place. Well, sin destroyed that. So now disease, uh, all kinds of, of, of trouble comes to us. So, um, but we have to keep our focus as we live in this world, as, as we face different troubles, uh, that we're only here for a time. So, you know, we have to focus on where we're going and keep that focus. And our focus has to be maintained in Scripture. So, um, getting a little further in looking at the Bible, you know, it's important to understand where the Bible comes from and that there's evidence of where it comes from and that is the Word of God. Uh, you know, I had mentioned before, that's how I became a Christian, is I didn't know much, but I knew that was God's Word. And so when a preacher told me I had to be baptized, well, that contradicted what I thought. But he said, it's written. And he was quoting Scripture, and I turned in my Bible, and there it is. Well, I didn't have any choice after that. I had to obey and I had to do what it said because that is God's word. When you have that proper understanding, then you can overcome a lot of things. You can never overcome your own think so because when you run across things and it contradicts you in your understanding, you're, you're forced to change. So uh, the problem is that when you talk to people, when you talk to theologians, they don't believe that. They don't believe 
They believe that this is the product of man with God's influence, but these men are fallible. Therefore, it's, you know, you can take or leave some of it. That's what they think. And if you don't think that this is from God, it opens the door to all kinds of problems. So people, you have to have that understanding. So <clears throat> we call this the Bible. Anybody know what that word means or where it came from? Book, right? So, um, you know, originally came from, from the reference to the... Uh, the uh, Hyrus plant that was used for paper, used as paper for writing. And, uh, you know, anything that was written on that was got to be called what it was written on. And over time, it just came to mean book. Uh, so the Bible is actually not one book, but a library of books. So... Um, there are how many books in the Bible? 66. How many in the Old? And how many in the New? So uh, we talked about you know, the Bible being written across a span of 1,600 years by you know, some odd 40 people, uh, 40 different writers. And I had talked about uh, last week about how hard it is to for two people to write about something and their writing be fit perfectly. Um, we talked about in investigative work, we have to be careful about uh, one person's writing the report. So if we're all writing reports, we're all going to have differences and those differences can be used to, to kind of show that maybe Y'all don't know what you're talking about. Maybe, you know, this crime didn't happen. So anyway, that's, that's the, the problem with men putting something together. But this is from God, and it all fits together and it goes together perfectly. So what is the overall theme of the Bible? What do you think? Say that again. God's Word. G salvation, Jesus, what, Gene? Jesus loves you. Um, in Genesis, what do we see? Right, the, be the beginning and God's creation. Um, and then we also see shortly in the same, at the same time in Genesis, what do we see? Man's what? His fall, right. So, uh, and then the problem is that Men's relationship is severed from God. So how does that get restored? How would we know how to fix that if we weren't told how to fix it? So it provides the, the knowledge of how man, uh, man can receive redemption. So why do you think God created man? First off, let's, let's look at what does God need? Say that again. Yeah. Okay, Gene. That's right. Because he loves us. Does he need us? No. He doesn't need God doesn't need anything. So we know that the only purpose is because he loves us. Um, so when we look at look at him and see that he created us because he does lo love us. And he created us to where we would love him and unfortunately when people don't then he puts those away from him so we want to end up in that group that love God and do what he says uh, Romans chapter 11 verse 34 in Romans chapter 11 verse 34 It says, for who has known the mind of the Lord, or who has become his counselor? Say that again. Uh-huh. So, you know, the Lord's purposes and ways are unsearchable. 
You know, I think Job talked about this, you know, or, or the book of Job, I guess, uh, about who, who can know. And, you know, and God was teaching Job at that time, you know, where were you when I did it, when I created all this? Uh, you know, you can't know anything about God. Uh, you don't have the ability to know. Um, God, uh, over in Acts chapter 17, verses 24 and 25. God didn't make us because he needed us for any reason or just to have us around. Uh, uh, so Acts chapter 17, verses 24 and 24, 25. God who made the world and everything in it, since he is Lord of heaven and earth, does not dwell in temples made with hands, nor is he worshipped with men's hands as though he needed anything, since he gives all life breath in all things. <clears throat> so, again, as, as I think Gene said, was, you know, the reason is God loved us. That's why. That's why God made us. And it was His will. Uh, Revelations 4.11 says, You are worthy, O Lord, to receive glory and honor and power, for you created all things, and by your will they exist and were created. It is for his glory, for his honor. So, <clears throat> in uh, Genesis 126 is where um, we see that we were created in God's image, not, not, not his actual uh, form or anything like that, but we're created. So, we, we think a lot. We have the ability to think and and understand uh, uh, and know the things of God. Um, and he's created us with the power to love, to have compassion. This He created us with this need to worship. We're going to worship something. And is it going to be God or is it something else? Every man worships something. Even, even the atheist, he says there's no God, but he still worships something. And uh, it may be his own think so or himself that he worships, but all men are going to worship something. So we are created that way. So we're, we're created with this ability to choose. God has the ability to choose, but he chooses always right. We have the ability to choose. And we're going to choose. All men choose. Um, so um, we have the ability to, to understand, and God calls us to make a choice, to serve him. So in um, Joshua 24, 15, that's what Joshua was talking about when he was talking to the Israelites uh, before his death. Death, And he said, and if it seems evil to you, Joshua 24, 15, and if it seems evil to you to serve the Lord, choose for yourselves this day whom you will serve, whether the gods which your fathers served that were on the other side of the river or the gods of the Amorites in whose land you dwell. But as for me and my house, we will serve the Lord. <clears throat> So, um, John uh, 7, 17 says, If anyone wills to do his will, he shall know concerning the doctrine, whether it is from God or whether I speak on my own authority. So, you know, Christ, you know, is talking about... Um, uh, you know, that you have the ability to know. And if you know, if you knew the word, then you know who, who, who he is. Um, man has the ability to, um, he has the, the responsibility to faithfully serve God. 
uh, Ecclesiastes 12, 13, verse we're familiar with. Let us hear the conclusion of the whole matter. Fear God and keep his commandments, for this is the man's all. That, that's your whole purpose. Um, our purpose is to glorify God. Isaiah 43, 7 says, Any, Everyone who is called by my name, whom I have created for my glory, I have formed him. Yes, I have made him. So, um, God shows us the reality of sin. And there are people who think they can sin and still go to heaven. And uh, they just, they don't, it's because lack of knowledge again. So, um, God tells us what sin is. Uh, scripture affirms the reality of it. Uh, 1 Kings 8.46 says, There is no man that does not sin. And Romans 8, uh, 3.23 and also 1 John chapter 1, 8, verse 8 and also verse 10, all have sinned. All have sinned. Uh, the conscience testifies to the presence of man's moral sensitivity. Um, hence, there's a responsibility to moral law. Romans chapter 2, verses 14 and 15 um, speaks of this. For when Gentiles who do not have the law by nature do the things in the law, these, although not having the law, are law to themselves, who show the work of the law written in their hearts their conscience also bearing witness, and between themselves their thoughts, accursing or else excusing them. We looked at that verse before. Um, the, uh, there is uh, sin. Sin has a, a, an effect on men. And it has an effect physically. It has a, a, an effect, a geophysical effect. It has a cultural effect, a psychological effect, uh, a spiritual effect. Uh, physically, how do, you think, how do you think sin affects us? Our physical bodies. Gene? So what, but what, what, so when you do, what happens to your body? Right. So what about just simple disease? We, ha we have disease on this earth. Why is it here? Say it again. Oh, punishment. So... In the, in the Garden of Eden, was there disease? No. So everything was perfect. Everything worked the way it's supposed to and the way God designed it. But when they sinned, that's what brought all this into, into our lives. Why is cancer here? It, it's because, it, all disease is here because of sin, because the world is broken. Okay, and yes, there's physical things like Jane was talking about, uh, alcohol and different things that you can do that creates more issues within your body. Um, so, um, <clears throat> yes. So, uh, geophysical, many of the erratic features of the earth causes, you know, the earth's surface and, and different things. The earth is completely changed because of the flood. So there's a lot of things that we have to deal with. Storms, earthquakes, and stuff like that. Um, so, uh, you know, that's a result. Why, why was there a flood? Right. So the evil of sin that was present on the earth. That's why that occurred. And because of that, it's created changes in this earth, more changes, and um, it brings about those things. What about culturally? 
we we have and and so we we um, have problems with people who do not who are from other countries. They don't think like us. We don't speak the same language. So we tend to get into fights because we don't share the same language, uh, disagreements and things like because we're not thinking the same. Um, so why why do all the people speak different languages? Yeah, the Tower of Babel. That's right. Which was sin. So... Um, Psychologically, man is general without, generally without peace of mind for which his heart longs for. When you know, unless he's turning to God, and uh, Gene and Jeff probably remember uh, um, someone saying this that uh, um, psychological problems occur when people are getting further and further away from God. And so the further away you get, the more problems you have. Um, as, you know, I have to go downtown to my HPD office in downtown. You see it a lot. You see it elsewhere, but you see all the people on the street. And you pull up next to a guy, and he's just talking to himself, and nobody's there. Well, how did he get like that? You know, he didn't get like that just because, you know, some, you know, something simple. It's because the way he was living his life that brought about, brought about those conditions. Um, you know, so the more, the more you do wrong in life, the more baggage you carry. And the more baggage you carry, after a while, it starts bothering you. And you have to... Find a way to escape all the all of those what's bothering you in your mind. So they turn to what drugs, alcohol, things like that. There, you know, but that's that's not the escape. You know, the way to fix it is turn back to God and get rid of those things, and God can heal you. So, uh, you know, so uh, we can. You know, be affected uh, that way. Um, that's what you know by sin, and of course, spiritually. You know, the bottom line is sin separates you from God. How many sins does it take to separate you from God? Just one. So, um, so if you do something that you're unaware of in God's scripture. Is that sin? Yes. The fact that you don't know doesn't matter. It's still sin. It's transgression of God's law. So when, um, when we're intentionally involved in things, so we live as Christians, so we have things in our life that we just don't bother to change. Well, that's just the way I am. Um, you know, I can't help it. You know, all the stuff that, that people tell themselves. So, um, you know, the fact is that sin affects us spiritually. It separates us from God. And God shows us that man's uh, can be, that problem can be uh, taken care of. And that's through the blood of Christ. All right, so when God created man, did he know man was going to rebel? All right, so he did know that. So if he knew that, why would he create man? Right?
Say that again, Barbara. All right, so he had all this, this plan before. He knew man was going to sin. He knew he's going to create man with a choice. He knew man was going to sin, that he had that ability, and that men, men would do that. And he also created the plan to resolve that all at the same time before, before creating any of this. So, um, if man turns his back on God, why, do, why would God care? Uh, since you're ungrateful and you don't care and you have this attitude of hatred towards God, why would God still reach out and provide a way to, to save you? Gene? Gene? God is love. Charles, do you have something? Okay. Well, I'm trying to jump ahead. Um, so, this scheme of... of, of that God has for this redemption, where do we start reading about it? That's right. In um, so. Um, I am trying to think what uh, all right so when we look when we look at uh, the Old Testament we see that Christ was in there um, there are um, times when Christ was here on this earth that he was pointing to scriptures that identified him and spoke of him and that they had no they had no reason not to know who he was he is doing things um, that no man can do um, you know there are scripture that points to his behavior and everything so he was always referencing uh, those scriptures and pointing out by saying it is written, you know, or have you not read? He was always doing that. Um, <clears throat> so um, we'll go ahead and uh, uh, stop there because the next part that I want to cover is a little bit gets gets a little bit more complicated when we look at uh, Christ and uh, where he where it shows Christ in the Old Testament so um, so we want to look at that so I think thank everybody for your time this morning and uh, I hope this is helpful and then we're going to spend uh, part of uh, next Sunday going over some more things and we're going to start getting into uh, specifics about Bible study, things like that. So I appreciate it.